The following program is presented with described video. Previously on MasterChef Canada, the home cooks ground out their best burgers. That makes me weak in the knees. A Canadian-inspired elimination challenge. Beer and apples. Garnered mixed reviews. Great depth of flavor. <sighs> Looks like a snow tire. But in the end, it was Danny who left the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Big D's out. Tonight. Welcome to the iconic distillery district. The home cooks cater an exclusive art gallery event. Come on, you guys. I'm the captain of this ship. I don't want to go down with nothing. Now! The losing team faces a pressure test that's no piece of cake. Oh, oh. And will send at least one person home. The only thing tropical about this is a typhoon hit it. The road to the home cook's next team challenge is a cobbled one, winding past historic buildings and acclaimed restaurants and galleries. I'm really excited to be here right now, and I'm just excited what's going to come because I have no idea. Welcome, everyone, to the iconic distillery district. Wow. This is the perfect location for your next team challenge because today you will be elevating cooking to an art form. You will be catering an exclusive event at Thompson Landry Art Gallery, and the food has to look as good as it tastes. I have no experience with fancy artwork, so I'm definitely a little bit concerned. You'll be serving over 100 guests, including some of the country's most prominent artists. Needless to say, their expectations are extremely high. I've got to serve 100 fancy you-know-whos in an art gallery? Hello? You cannot let the Thompson Landry Gallery down. This important event cannot be ruined by the food. For this challenge, you'll be divided into two teams, the red team and the blue team. And each team will have just two hours to make and serve exquisite canopies. One hot, one cold, and one sweet. And don't forget, this art has to be created in volume in a very short period of time. Dora, as the winner of the last elimination challenge, you're captain of the red team. Danielle, as the runner-up, you're captain of the blue team. Going into the challenge, I have a few people in mind who I'm going to pick. At the top of my list is Dale and Josh. I really would like people who've had fancy fine dining experience. Mm. All right, for my first choice, uh, I'm going with somebody that's got a lot of flair and exciting flavors. And uh, pretty on trend, too. My first pick's going to be Carly. It's an interesting choice. Danielle, now it's your choice. My first choice is someone who has a passion for art of food. He has been a server, and I'm sure my choice will surprise a lot of people. My first choice is Dale. <sighs> Danielle picks Dale. I really want Dale, because he is one fancy bitch, and I needed him. Danielle, why do you think that choice would surprise people? In the last team challenge, Dale didn't do so well as a leader. However, I think he's going to make a great team member. The next person I'm going to pick, uh, I have a lot of respect for their experience, and might be my little ace in the hall. I'm going to choose Mike. Good choice, buddy. I can rock a tray. I know you can, sunshine. Look at them out. Yeah. My next choice is someone who knows flavor to a tea. My choice is Josh. My other secret weapon, Tamara. Eric. Marita, get your fine little buns over here. <laughs> Thank you, Dora. Pino. Welcome aboard. Kayla, Julie, how do you feel about being the last two to be picked? I haven't got the best reviews in the kitchen. I'll change everyone's mind today. Kayla, how about you? You've had great reviews. I'm a little bit surprised, but I think I'm gonna blow this one out of the water. I haven't really got to know Danielle, but I haven't really gotten along with her thus far, and I don't feel like she's gonna give us a chance to shine. So I'm really hoping that I'm on Dora's team. Dora, you have the final pick. All right, well, I know who I'm going for. You can't have two Italians in one kitchen. Too much stuff gets done. Julie, you're my girl. Thank you. I'm always last pick. 
I'm actually very happy to have Kayla on my team. I do know that Kayla was a server for several years and she has proved herself in the kitchen. So welcome aboard. Thank you. I'm very excited to be on your team. Thank you. Maybe people still underestimate me, which really plays into my strategy anyways, because the more people underestimate me, the more I can kick their butt. During the challenge, we will be observing you in action and canvassing the guests for feedback. Ultimately, we will select the winning team. The losing team will face the pressure test, and one of you will leave MasterChef Canada for good. You have two hours to prep, cook, and serve your edible works of art. Your two hours start now. Each team is responsible for creating over 300 canapes and a catering space near the gallery. Don't push me, bitches. But first, they have to decide on the canapes they will make. Okay, let's start talking. Knowing that each has to be a work of edible art. Okay, guys, start talking. I would say tuna tartare because it's simple, classic, and we can really spice it up with so many different flavors. I would say tuna tartare. Okay, Veg. dessert. So a dessert, my strategy is that I'm not going to dictate the menu. I'm going to allow each team member to have some input. I was thinking base gallops with a crispy pancetta chip and a beautiful mint or a jalapeno oil. I really like that. You I know think what? I've done I, I, it. It's a good, it's really good. I've done okay. it. Danielle's letting people talk. She is taking ideas. Who knew? Let this guy cook scallops, 100%. Josh yeah, cooks the like scallops. Josh is on scallops. Okay. Good? Yeah, we're good. Blue Team's edible art will include tuna tartare on a crispy wonton, base scallops in a prosciutto cup, and a chocolate raspberry petit four. Okay, so what do you want to do? We could do a hot bellini, dill and caviar, like total traditional. I'm not looking for traditional. We are in an art district right now. Food as art as a challenge is kind of scaring the crap out of me right now. Okay, let's not argue about this. Shit. Let's just figure it out. Yeah. The menu plan, I actually thought in my head it was going to be a lot smoother. Yeah, well, we don't got time. But then immediately we all kind of start butting heads. We have the smoking gun. No, smoke, let's not uh, fiddle with the smoking gun, please. No. Okay, guys, let's not lose it in the very first beginning. This is my neck on the line. I'm the captain of this ship and I don't want to go down with nothing. What about um, the samosas? Do we have tamarind? So you can do an inside out samosa where you have just a piece of dough and the topping on top. Yes. Okay, that's yes. a great idea. Yes. Okay. Eventually, Red Team decides on caviar and creme fraiche on endive, an inside out samosa, and a spiced orange petit four. How spicy do we want the samosas? Not too spicy. Not crazy? Okay. I was a little surprised at some of the choices that Dora made, to be honest with you. She had the option of choosing someone like Dale, someone like Josh, who can pull out the rabbit from the hat as far as the refined cooking style. I think Dora took it personal. And Danielle was very strategic. She chose people that have certain skills in different areas. And I think that's going to give her a great result. I'm feeling pretty good about this. We've got more of a refined style. We love nice plating. And I think we're a little more familiar with canapes than the red team's going to be. Okay. So, Dora. Yes. Tell me what's going on. We're doing an inside out samosa. Tamara's in charge of that bad boy. Why are you making inside out? Because we want it to be one bite. A big samosa had too much wrapper and it'd be too doughy. Yeah. So we just want to make it so light and presentable. Oh, fantastic. So, you're doing the potatoes. I am. I'm doing the filling. Are you going to remove the peel? No, we're not going to remove the peel today. Why not? Because that is going to eat up a lot of time. These potatoes are super small and very weirdly shaped. Oh, I don't know. It's not going to be as refined, you know, if you leave the peel on. Chef told us our dish is not refined, so I will peel every single baby potato if I have to. So on the blue team, I did notice they are tasting by committee. Dale, Danielle, Kayla and Josh seem to be doing all the tasting, which is interesting approach. Perfect. It's good, right? This going on the tuna? Yeah, I Hell think yes. it's going to be perfect Hell yes. for the tuna. Over on the red team, all the tasting has fallen to Captain Dora. I go to taste the samosa. And it's really overpowering. Like, all I'm getting is garlic and ginger. My throat's on fire. That's pretty spicy. You can't screw this up. Dora's kind of freaking out, but none of the filling or other components are in it. You have one hour left in this cook. One hour of cook time. Okay, so where are we at? Who needs what? I'm worried that we're not gonna get these things on the plate. Team, we gotta take a deep breath. This is where we can hoop ourselves. Just let's get focused. Let's do this. Meanwhile, 
Filipino is preparing a prosciutto base for the blue team's base scallop canapé. Our intentions were to have a nice, crisp little cup. Well, I see Pino putting the prosciutto in a little muffin mold, and they're going to bake that off, I guess, to get it crispy. I wouldn't advise that. Maybe at a tailgate, but not in a gallery. And the failing point could be that they are very salty and bitter. Pino, aren't you concerned that prosciutto, when you cook it, becomes a little salty? We want a little bit of a crunch. Greasy fingers, maybe for the guests afterwards. This is a bit of a problem here, guys. Danielle? Sorry? This is leathery, and it is salty. It could be the biggest problem. I'll leave it with you. Good luck. Appreciate the input. I think that's going to be salty enough with the rest of the no, components. No, it's going to be way too salty. I'm sorry, but that grossed me out. We're not going to be able to get rid of the salt, Again, so I say scrap it. They better figure something out quick. Hello there, Red Team. Hi, Chef. So what have we got here? Chef Michael comes by to taste the samosas. This here is extremely overpowered. I know that. Yes. I have the same concern, too. When he's reiterating my concern about these flavors being too strong. That would scare me to be eating that. I'm starting to freak out. Tamara, look at me. That's very strong for me. So is that going to yeah. tone down a bit? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a lot of trust in Tamara. But if a guest eats this thing and they spit it out, we're done. That samosa filling is way over the top. It's something I do not want to eat, I don't even want to serve, and it won't go out of this kitchen if they don't fix it. In Toronto's historic distillery district, the blue team and red team are making over 300 canapes for an exclusive art gallery event. And their food has to look as good as it tastes. I'm not looking for traditional. We are in an art district right now. With only 40 minutes before service, the red team needs to adjust their samosa filling. That would scare me to be eating that. And the blue team needs to switch out the base of their scallop canapé. This is leathery and it is salty. So what can we do that could go well with a sea scallop? These prosciutto cups are bad. Um, Food and art lovers aren't going to appreciate this. I don't think anyone's going to appreciate this. It's just not edible. Let me think um, about it. Let me think about it right now. What about a potato chip? Like a thin potato chip. Kayla steps up to the plate. She grabs the purple new potatoes, and we have a plate on fish and chips. We're going to be serving a bay scallop on a beautiful purple potato chip. Chips are so much better. They're delicious. Awesome. All of a sudden, one of our worst ideas turns into one of our best. Yeah. So you're making potato chips. I am making purple potato chips. Originally, our plan was to make uh, prosciutto crisps. But Did I hear Josh in the background? I thought this was a great backup. I am really happy with it. I like it. See fish and chips. Exactly. Good idea. Thank you can you name chef. it fish and chips now. Thank you, chef. You, my friend, need to come up with your own ideas. But thank you for loving my idea so much that you wanted to take it. I really appreciate it. I hope you're going to enjoy it. I hope I do. <laughs> Over on the red team, Tamara continues to adjust the flavors on the samosa filling. I need you to taste this. It's hot, Polly. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm starting to feel a little bit better about the samosa. There's a little ray of sunshine, I hope. Those are delicious. 30 minutes left. 30 minutes before you present your first dish. You should be thinking about final details, presentation, garnish. Have you got it? Yes, 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 yes. yes. The blue team's first canapé, tuna tartare, has a crispy wonton base. Danielle. But the team cannot agree on the seasoning. Why are we seasoning these? Mm -mm. We've got the seasoning in the fish. It's a piece of crispy nothing. The wontons come out of the fryer, and they don't get seasoning. Some seasoning. Something. The seasoning is in the fish. You don't want to take it away from the fish. It's salt and pepper. It's exactly what we needed. We're not going to salt them, because the seasoning that's going on the tartare is really going to shine through. What's your, what's your worry? Meanwhile, the red team is having trouble with the creme fraiche for their caviar and endive canapes. So what have we got here? It's a creme fraiche with a lemon zest seasoning dill. That is too thin. It'll dribble and get over people's clothes okay, and that's... be a complete mess. Okay. okay, how are we fixing that then? Yogurt? Greek yogurt. Let's get moving. Come on, you guys. Carly, let's just get it going because we are out of time. Team captains, you should be wrapping up your main production and thinking about how you're going to present the dishes. I need somebody over here, hence Carly, to tell me how to plate these things. We've got to have a hundred of these things. Oh my God, I'm freaking out. I'm panicking. Listen, can you look right at now. me in my eyes? Yes. yes. Yeah. We need to think of a plan. Time. You need to let me finish my sentence yes, before I'm you tell me no. I'm listening to you. We need to move this down. Yes, yeah. yeah, so that we have more room for these. Get this small shit out of our way. I'm not concerned about this right now. I'm worried that we're not going to get these things on the plate. As 
the teams scramble to plate their canapes, the Thompson Landry Gallery is filling up with hungry art patrons. Watch out, guys. Behind, behind. If it needs to be done, it needs to be done now. You have 15 minutes left. How long? Your two service team members have to leave the kitchen now. Go, go, go. Right, go. Right, go. Get them. Okay, guys, go. let's go. Right. These cakes need to go in the fridge. fridge. Go, go, go. And 15 minutes till you have to present your first canapé. Yes, yes, yes. yes. We need production stat. The red team is struggling with their plating, while the blue team is nearly done. Good evening. Good evening. Right now I'm feeling great. I mean, we executed everything. Our dishes look great. They taste great. I think we've got this one in the bag. Way to go, blue team. Final two minutes. Things will be coming out of this kitchen in two minutes. Go. With mere moments to spare, Go. blue team servers are out the door with their cold canapé tuna tartare on a crispy wonton. Julie, stop those tomatoes. Come on over, Rover. Come on, red team. You have one minute left. Come on. We go to grab our trays, but they've got them on, like, hotel chafing dishes. Guys, we don't have service trays? We have no serving trays. Go. We're extremely late. Alvin is saying, hurry up. You are not serving them on those trays. He is flipping out. Hey, come on, Red Team. Come on. We got to tray these on the Where? Master Chef serving tray. Oh, Come on. QP, come on. Just... Alvin's screaming at us right now to get this food out. You're really late. And give me a stack of napkins. Okay, run. I will You're load. Ten, nine, eight. Seven. It's hashtag chaos. Napkin! Six, five, four, three, you're late, come on! Live tweet with us at MasterChef CDA. Use hashtag MCC. We gotta tray these on Where? the MasterChef serving tray. Oh, oh my God. I'm gonna screw it up because I put on the wrong freaking tray. Come on, red team! QP, come on! Just... Alvin's screaming at us right now to get this food out. It's hashtag chaos. Two, one, time to get your first canopy out. Come on, you're late, come on. Finally, the red team is out the door with their caviar and creme fraiche on endive. <laughs> While the blue team is already in the gallery serving their tuna tartare on a crispy wonton. maybe a bit of a zip, some sort of maybe a dollop of something that would have brought out some flavors. The citrus was very nice, but I really enjoyed it. Although the guests' feedback will be taken into account... It smells nice. It does smell good. It's the judges who will choose the winning team in this challenge. I like it presentation-wise. Simple, eye-pleasing, easy to eat. There's nothing in it that pops out. There's no ginger. The dressing is very flat, very under-seasoned. I think it needs some freshness, some fresh herbs in there. What it does have is the wonton wrapper has a good crunch to it. I hit the judges first, okay? Although the red team is late coming out, they're hoping their cold canapé with caviar and creme fraiche will get a good reaction. So we've got a little endive boat. That's a crispy shallot. We really wanted to highlight the caviar here. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Back I liked it. I'm not a huge endive fan, but it worked well with the caviar, the bitterness versus the salt. The presentation, the rings like that, mm -hmm. it's impressive. It's got volume, it's got texture. This onion is so strong, it's going to overpower the caviar. I think they were able to salvage the creme fraiche. It's not as runny. Okay, let's get the scallops out of the fridge. Back in the kitchen, the blue team's hot canapé is almost ready to go. Scallops, tartar, one flour on each. It's a play on fish and chips, seared scallops on a purple potato chip. And the judges agree. This is the best looking order so far for me. I thought the sea scallop was cooked nicely and the potato was good and crisp. That works. Because the food must keep on rolling out, the pressure in the kitchen okay. does not let up. We gotta get our butts in gear. Let's go, let's start plating right now, guys. Start plating. And the red team is catching up. We are a 
hot mess, but guess what? This hot mess is putting out some good food. But they unexpectedly run out of serving options for their hot canapé. Dora, what do you want the samosas on? Uh, you just please make a choice. The only vessel left is a small wine glass. What do you think of this? It's a little weird. And in this well, challenge, presentation fine. is as important okay. as taste. I cannot put a samosa inside a cup. If it's inside, they have to reach their hands Okay, we, yeah. And so I just start putting the cups upside down and plating them on top. That's perfect. It's an inside out, upside down samosa. They're gonna love it. It's innovative. Inside out samosa on an upside down cup. Ooh, and they are vegan. That's fantastic. <laughs> this is the one that you worry about. I see big smiles everywhere. That's my kind of dish. It's just balance. Cumin, coriander seed, chili. Everything is just working all together. It's all balanced. Damn, it was good. That is a restaurant quality dish. Yep, absolutely. Hey, guys, I need a hand on this dessert. With a final push, the sweet canapes from both teams are on their way. We've got to get that last tray out, guys. Come on, push, push. Blue team is serving a chocolate raspberry petit four. And the gallery patrons give it rave reviews. <laughs> oh. oh, yes, I love that. It's delicious. Sweetness, perfect, very moist, perfectly done. There's only one thing wrong with it. There's not enough of it. I need more of that. It's delicious. And finally, the red team is presenting a spiced orange petit four. The, the contrast of the orange and the chocolate, the orange, that's really, such a really, classic. Yeah, it's a win. Really nice floral notes with the orange combo. I like the fact they have some edible flowers on here. It's pretty. It's a nice way to end a cocktail reception. Sweet ending. Good job, guys. Way to go. Woo, woo. Good job. Woo. I've tasted everything. It's got the Dora seal of approval. At this point, I'm actually thinking we're going to win this thing. They said that this was art on a plate. With the feedback we get from Dale and Kayla, we really feel like we've just won. Our cafes are fantastic. I don't even see how the other team is going to have a chance to beat us. Good evening, everyone. But before the judges make their decision, they get feedback from the guests. Did they prefer the blue team's tuna tartare, seared scallops, and chocolate petit four, or the red team's caviar with creme fraiche, samosas, and orange petit four? How was it? That's the big question. <laughs> all blue all the way. Blue brought so much to the night tonight. I really enjoy the blue team tonight. Love every single thing from them. I felt Red's treatment of the dishes showed a level of sophistication that Blue just missed. Oh, really? Good. So for me, it's Red. Team Blue, the chocolate raspberry was excellent. I think it's Team Red for me because of the inverted samosa. I did enjoy Blue's food better. However, I did enjoy Red's dessert better. So it's going to be kind of a toss-up. Red Team, Blue Team. You've just served over a hundred of the country's most demanding food and art lovers. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. you all did such an incredible job. You should be very proud of yourselves. It was a tough challenge. And because both teams did such an outstanding job, our decision came down to just two canopies. One was the only offering that missed the mark tonight. The other canopy was the undisputed star of the evening. So just like in the art world, the reviews are in. And tonight, in this gallery, the best team is... Our decision came down to just two canopies. And tonight, in this gallery, the best team is the red team. Oh my god, are you freaking kidding me? This plumber girl just made a room full of a hundred of the fanciest people happy. <laughs> Congratulations, Red Team. Your samosas were edible masterpieces. Blue Team, your tuna tartare was not as good as everything else. That means you will be facing the pressure test. I'm so disappointed right now. I absolutely thought we had this in the bag. My heart is broken.
It was my tuna tartare. If Danielle would have tasted the tartare mixture, she would have been able to tell in two seconds that it needs salt and pepper. She should be going down for this. It's the day after the Food as Art Challenge, and the blue team faces a pressure test that will send at least one of them home. I'm definitely worried about being in a pressure test. I would love to save myself, but because the tuna tartare was on my head, I don't feel like it's the right choice. You were tasked with making beautiful canopies for art patrons at the Thompson Landry Art Gallery. The red team came marginally closer to the food as art objective and are safe from elimination. Danielle, unfortunately, your team lost the challenge by a single canopy. To know that we're off by one dish, it's painful. Just a little bit more seasoning in our tuna tartare dish and we probably would have had this one. Well, blue team, you're about to face a pressure test that will end with at least one of you going home. All I can think about is when I'm offered immunity, whether or not I'm going to accept it. But not all of you are going to have to compete. Two people will be granted immunity and will not have to cook in this challenge. And that decision rests with... The red team. That's a lot of power to be handing over. I'm a little happy about it because I know I'm not picking. Huddle, huddle, huddle. <laughs> I know right away that there's no chance I'm getting saved. They're going to make sure that the four strongest cooks are out there. First things first, I'm keeping who's strong on the floor because I need one of the best cooks to go home. I think, I think Kayla. No, think no, you're on the wrong board. Okay. I'm a little bit adamant about keeping Eric in because I do think that he's a competitor. Are we agreed? Yeah. Yes. I don't agree, but I'm the odd man out. Dora, who is the first member of the blue team that you have decided to save from today's pressure test? Uh, the first person from the blue team that we're going to save today is... Pino. Good luck, guys. I got a lot of respect for Pino, but at the same hand, does he cook any more than Italian? No. Nope. Dora, who is the second member of the blue team that you've decided to save? <sighs> Man alive. We're gonna save Eric. Eric, please take your apron off and head up to the gallery, please. I'm super relieved, but at the same time, there's a big feeling of guilt. We all work super hard, and I just feel so guilty that I'm not down there cooking with them. Good luck, Josh. The red team's very smart. They picked Pino and Eric because they're the weakest two leaks. Now, it's time for the four of you to face the pressure test. You'll be creating a classic MasterChef dessert. A stunning, delicious cheesecake. Oh. The cheesecake, and my heart sinks. Not excited. I'm ecstatic. I love cheesecake. I'm very happy. A rich, creamy filling. A crisp, sweet crust. Perfect balance of texture and flavor. One ingredient overused, and the beautiful balance will be destroyed. I'm not a baker. I've made it once before, once, and it didn't really turn out. So I'm freaking out. And in case you need another reason to do your very best, we have one. The person who makes the best Philadelphia cream cheesecake today will have their recipe featured in a Philadelphia cream cheese magazine ad. <laughs> Please head to your stations. In front of you are six ingredients. Farm fresh eggs, sugar, Vanilla, graham crackers, butter, and Kraft's iconic Philadelphia cream cheese. These quality ingredients are all you need to create a stunning cheesecake. If you fail, it's all on you. 
There's also a limited pantry in the equipment room that has additional ingredients in case you want to make your cheesecake stand out from the pack. You have just 90 minutes. Your time starts now. Josh, smash. To be perfectly honest, I'm not a baker and I've never cooked a cheesecake, but I've been on a pressure test before and I've battled my way out of it. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. To make this cheesecake in 90 minutes, that's a lot of pressure. This is a tough test for them. Some of the pitfalls would be obviously over baking, under baking. Too much air wouldn't be good. Not enough air would not be good either, right? You want that nice creamy center, almost dense. And not too high in the oven and not too low, right in the center rack. There is no way that this cheesecake is sending me home today. Absolutely not. You have five minutes before you should have the cheesecakes in the oven baking. Oh, oh. Holy this right, guys. Kayla has just pulled out some chocolate. So my concern would be it's starting to get a little too sweet, yeah. too heavy. Everyone else is just going to do their standard cheesecake. And I really think that taking this risk is either going to make me or break me. Let's go. Now, I just noticed Danielle was passing her cheesecake mixture through a fine chinois. That's smart. Get rid of the little uh, connecting tissue with the egg. Right. It's very smart. We're at the 15-minute mark. You need to have those cheesecakes in the oven now. Straight in or on a pan? On a sheet pan. No. That extra metal is conducive. No. Put it on the sheet pan. That cheesecake's worth $100,000. You have that much <laughs> extra metal to heat up. Are you kidding me? Thank you, Josh. Kayla, come on. Put, Put it in the oven, Kayla. And now we need to see what they do with garnishes. So it's neck and neck. Listen, I'm making a passion fruit topping. It's going to be unbelievable. You know what I'm interested in is Josh's approach. He does mangoes, he has passion fruit. I think it's going to be interesting what he does. But you know who I'm worried about? Dale. I think Dale's toppings are going to look messy. He's got all these different purees. It's going to look like a mistake. Rum or bourbon? Rum. 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 Stay tropical, man. Heads up. So fancy, Josh. Listen. Listen. Well, he seems to be very relaxed. He's talking to calories. He's talking to everyone. Why not cook with fire? Woo! Ah, oh, it's the flame. Chef. Josh, how are you? I'm great. More importantly, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, actually. I got my passion for going for my topping. It smells amazing. Kind of been wafting it towards the gallery. I think they appreciate that. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good with this right now. Well, good luck. Appreciate that, Jeff. Again, I love that limoncello. <laughs> Thank you. Right? The moment I take my cake out, my heart sinks. My whole entire cheesecake has fallen. <laughs> Two minutes left. Finishing touches, tidying up, getting ready to present. I go to pull the spring form, and sure enough, it is stuck to that bad boy. 45 seconds remaining. You need to hustle, hustle, hustle. I got to get my cake on this plate, but it's stuck. I mean, the thing is basically frozen to the cake pan. Oh, Damn it, Josh. You get your spatula. spatula. You force it off. 10 seconds remaining. Oh, it's going, it's going. It's going. Nine. Eight, seven, okay. six. I push with all my strength. Five, four, three, two. Hey, I've got my listening ears on. Think special. No, I don't understand. Think two nights. Oh my God, you feel that too, right? Oh, I'm feeling it now. Think special. Two night premiere. This is a very big thing. Oh, it's gonna be fun. It's gonna get weird. <laughs> 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 Dave Foley spun out. A special two-night premiere starts March 6th, right after the Big Bang Theory. Well, that, well that's, that's, uh, that's, why did I come out here? With only seconds left in the cheesecake pressure test, the home cooks are struggling to plate their creations. Ten seconds remaining. Oh, it's going, it's going. It's going. Nine, eight, seven, okay. six, five, four, three, two, one. Hands up! Oh, God, that was crazy. I'm really worried. I've got a pit in my stomach. Josh's looks messy as probably. 
half of his cake is still on his plate. I think my cake's a disaster, but Kayla's cake looked like a chocolate cake with a little bit of cheese in it. My cake definitely stands out. That could either be great for me or it could be really, really bad. I'm actually really happy. It's risen and there's no cracks. They're all in trouble. It's time to taste your cheesecakes and find out who will be leaving the MasterChef Canada kitchen. Dale, please bring your cheesecake up. I don't know what to think as I'm walking up. I know my cake tastes good. I know it may not look good. Are you happy with the way your cheesecake turned out? I'm very disappointed. I make cheesecake all the time. It's pretty much my favorite dessert. It's a generous portion of topping to crust. Very smooth, very creamy. The cream cheese is coming through very nicely. And the contrast of that crust, it eats very well, but doesn't present as well. I thought you'd made this hundreds of times. I have, Chef. You know, I expected so much more from you based on how confident you were going into this competition. Fanned out strawberries are very typical. Everything I've seen from you so far is creative. Danielle, please bring your cheesecake up here. It's a limoncello key lime cheesecake. Oh, looks nice. But taste also counts. Crust is crispy. I get the Philadelphia cream cheese, which I like. Wow. What do you think of that profile? It actually looks quite nice. Doesn't get much better. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Thank you. It's actually beyond very good. Thank you very much, Chef. Kayla, please bring up your cheesecake. I'm super stressed out because it doesn't look as pretty as I thought it did, and something as small as that could literally send me home. Wow. Wow. You did a nice marbling effect. You missed a little bit of crust, though. Yes, yeah, Chef. But I give you marks for definitely standing out from everyone else. The only thing I'm concerned about here is that you didn't really honor the main ingredient, which is cheese. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. Well, if different was your goal, you achieved that. In a bad way? In a good way. Thank you, Chef. I think my cake looks the worst, hands down. Josh, would you please bring a cheesecake up? I'm just hoping that the flavors are going to speak for themselves. The judges are going to see that I was trying to be innovative, creative, and take risks. Look, obviously from its immediate presentation, it's disappointing. The cracks, the way it's slumped, damaged edge. But it holds well. Very good. Have you made cheesecake before? No, I have not. That passion fruit, it's quite magical. Thank you, chef. But it still looks disastrous. I agree, the plating wasn't there, but I wanted to be innovative and use flavors that hadn't been done before. And I'm hoping you're gonna see that and taste that with my cake today. I can understand that you're hoping that. 
Do you think that's innovative? It's inspired by the art we saw yesterday. It's a little postmodern, you know? <laughs> Aside from that, the flavors are where the innovation the is. Flavor. The flavor. What was it? Tropical? Tropical. I want Tropical. It. Absolutely. I think all of my food has been innovative, creative, and delicious. I certainly think this is the same. I think the plating uh, just got away from me in the last minute there. The only thing tropical about this, it's a typhoon hit it. You think that's innovative? The flavors are where the innovation the is. Flavor. The flavor. What was it? Tropical? Tropical. The only thing tropical about this, it's a typhoon hit it. The only thing that can save you right now is how this thing tastes. Right now, I'm just praying for a miracle. I know my cake's ugly, but at the same time, I think it's pretty delicious. That was a demanding pressure test, and one of you will be going home. We need a moment to discuss. For me, there was definitely two. I'm not sure I agree with that. I think the taste and flavor was no better or worse than any of them up there. Brutal. The goal in this pressure test was to create a perfect cheesecake. And some efforts were worse than others. Danielle, Kayla, please step forward. Danielle, your cheesecake was the best of the bunch and will be featured in a Philadelphia cream cheese magazine ad. Thank you very much. Please remove your apron, and you can head up to the gallery. Thank you. Kayla, your cheesecake was the second best. <sighs> Take off your apron, go up there. Thank you. My heart is racing like never before. I'm terrified. I can't go home. I'm not done here. This is such a hard call. Dale and Josh, it pains us to see you both in this position. You are two of the most promising cooks in this competition. But we have to judge you one dish at a time. MasterChef Canada can feel like a roller coaster. Sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. In this test, both of you were down and one of you is at the very bottom. And that person is... Josh. Josh, you're a very talented cook. You flavored your cheesecake with passion fruit, which is appropriate because you cook with passion and drive. Thank you. Don't give up your food dream. Thank you for the opportunity, chefs. I appreciate it. For me, being here in the MasterChef Canada kitchen just reinforced how much I love doing this and how much I want to cook every day. The best dish we've had so far. <laughs> I don't look back with any regrets. I look back and I smile on everything that's happened. It's beautiful. It's just stunning. Every single opportunity I had to cook in front of these three judges Woo! showed me that this is what I should be doing. This is what I want to be doing. Yes. Yes. It's what I love. I love being able to cook. I love being able to share that with people. And that's what I'm going to keep doing. Josh, who's going to be the first MasterChef Canada? Chefs. I gotta say, I think Eric's gonna represent Canada as our first master chef. He's young, he's got passion, and the guy's a ninja in the kitchen. Knock him dead. Take care, guys. In terms of this competition, one of the top contenders just got out of the master chef kitchen. This just made all the competitors realize this competition is real. Josh was a huge contender, and this is gonna really change the competition. A lot of people standing up on the balcony should be worried. 
I was just in the bottom, it's not going to be so easy to get me in the bottom next time. Coming up, the home cooks face an emotional mystery box challenge. It's not like I left a job, I left my life. Now, and the toughest elimination challenge.